Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm chatting with Joel Alconin. We're going to be talking about the weak U.S. jobs data that came out this morning and a bit of a meltdown in the markets that we are seeing to end this week as we have the S&P down about 2.5%, the Dow down over 2%, the Russell has been down over 4% today. A lot for us to get to in this daily editorial. Joel is the co-host of the Benzinga Pre-Market Prep Show, also editor of the Pre-Market Prep website. Joel, starting with that jobs data, big miss, 114,000 jobs added. The estimate was for right around 185,000. Unemployment rate rose to 4.3%. This is the highest since October 2021. Look, fact of the matter is, weak data continues to come in out of the U.S., a general slowing of the economy, and now the markets are really taking notice. Joel, what was your takeaway from that jobs number today? I mean, you saw the reaction to it. You had a little hit yesterday while with the claims, but the people have been calling for that big, bad recession. The Fed has wanted to slow down inflation and get unemployment up a little bit. Well, the Fed has got what they wanted, and the market is having a violent reaction to it today. It's not rotation. It's just frustration and just everything getting hit across the board. So they wanted lower rates. Well, you got to have an economic slowdown to get lower rates. So you can't have your cake and eat it too, Corey. Oh, man, this meltdown, it's hitting everything. The only thing that I'm seeing that is up today is the VIX, obviously, because everything's melting down, and the bond market. We have the 10-year now below 3.9%. It's 3.82. This is really locking in a Fed rate cut. But, Joel, is that even going to help? Can that save the markets? Can that save the economy? I mean, they're talking. They're already going to a 50 basis point. Talk of that. Boy, oh boy. I guess if anything that that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks or last couple of months was the 5%, 6% on your money, was it going to get any better than that? And you know what? It's not going to get any better than that. We definitely have reached a turn. Uh, a lot of people have said that the inflation is, is cut into a lot of consumer spending, not necessarily across the board, but <clears throat> it, it's hard when you see this kind of data, even if you try and put it in a historical perspective, the kind of, the economy is slowing down. Less jobs are being created. Unemployment rate rate is higher. They were going to be worried about anything over uh, 4.28. Well, it came in at 4.3. So there you have it. The data has turned and data has turned against the market. So this market rollover, it's about three weeks long now. I find it interesting that it started almost when we turned the calendar over into the second half of the year, into the third quarter. We also saw a three-week sell-off right as we went into the second quarter of this year. What's so different about these sell-offs here, Joel? The sell-offs from, from this is that stocks are coming from, many stocks are just coming from just outrageous valuations and just outrageous moves in price. So, yeah, things all come down from elevated levels, but you had to be flabbergasted the way the market made that march in uh, early July from 5,500 to 5,700 in just a matter of a, a couple weeks. Now, if one thing, if you've been listening to me for years on your broadcast, you know that what a bull eats in a month, a bear scarves in a day. And when you go up through these kind of uh, areas so quickly, when you come back down, there's very little price memory in indexes or stocks or whatever. So got, stocks got uh, a lot of the tech stocks got to these ridiculous valuations, ridiculous prices because it was based on, on AI and what AI it was going to be the immediate panacea. And they were going to, the technology, the chips, the research they were doing was going to translate immediately into the bottom line. And what we're seeing from this quarter is it's not. No, it is not. We don't know when this AI is actually going to start generating some profits for these companies, but these companies, they're going to keep spending money on it. That brings us to some earnings reports. Earnings reactions have been pretty rough this season. Anything noteworthy to you, Joel? Yeah, and with very few exceptions, 
Dennis, you know, the co-host that I do the pre-market prep show, we share a lot of ideas and he was really strong on, man, they're just selling the rip early on. Just any stocks that have pulled back and then they have this overhead supply in it, they've been selling the rip. So that's what you've been seeing from early earnings season. And then on the downside, there's a little bit of a buyer strike. And that's what you had up there. So you went from being able to sell in the strength, just get your offers lifted wherever you want, into selling into a declining market, which is much more difficult even if you're trying to do size. I mean, I think another thing that you have to be aware of, and it's probably spooking the markets, is Warren's been doing some selling. He started doing some selling at Apple not too long ago, but he's been selling a boatload of a Bank of America. That's putting some pressure on Bank of America. And what is astounding is that he's already at such a high cash level, right? For him to be selling now and raising his cash level higher, maybe he wants to still try and lock in some of the rates that are out there. And once Warren starts doing something, once Warren starts buying, he keeps buying. Once Warren starts selling, he keeps selling. So Apple, he sold this midget, and then it had the big move higher. People are worried that he's unloading now and that the 10Ks that are coming out over the weekends get a review that he sold more stock. If you talk about one bright spot in this market today, that's Apple Inc. off their their earnings reports trading up 2.96% while the market is trading down 2.4%. You usually don't see that kind of divergence of nearly 6%. So a little bit of the war and selling effect, I think, is putting a little extra pressure on the market today. Yeah, that just goes to show just how rough it is in the markets. If Apple can be up and everything seems to be down well more. Uh, Joel, is there a safety play out there then outside of simply moving into cash and some sort of yielding instrument? On days like this, not really. I mean, the old gold just gave you the old kick in the teeth move, right? Gets up to twenty five, twenty two, and quietly sells off fifty dollars, right? Uh, now down on the day, silver poked his head into the twenty nine handle. No, I mean cash is boring, right? And you're missing out. Everyone on Twitter is making all this money with all these stocks making these outrageous moves, but you don't hear anything about people losing money. And there's definitely been so preconditioned to continuing to buy the dip here. That mentality has been, been broken. Also, you talk about frothiness in the markets and the meme stocks, the shenanigans that we had not too long ago with it. Also, Chewy, I mean, a lot of times those are symptomatic of a bubble, just things just getting bubblicious. And talking about selling the rip, I mean, a stock like Decker's was up like a hundred bucks over on its report, and now it's coming down. On the day of its report, it traded up to 980. It's at 864. AMD traded up its report two days ago to 153. That's back knocking on the door of the low of the move. And your leader, your darling, which is yet to report, NVIDIA has quietly given back 35 bucks off its, its all-time high. So... Lost leadership, a preponderance of sellers, and a lack of buyers at these levels. So how concerned do we have to be simply for the second half of this year, Joel? Even if we're getting rate cuts, the market, at least today, is telling us those aren't going to save it. That's what the market's saying. I try and not, um, you know, be political, okay? Because it's hard to do when you're in the, the media business. Uh, but a lot of people are scared for October or excuse me, November, and the election. And there's a lot of things going on with the election. I mean, you have an assassination attempt against Trump. You have geopolitical concerns. The war in Israel with Hamas is going on nearly a year. I think another thing that really caught people's attention yesterday, and I think was the catalyst for the sell-off, was stern warnings from Israel about the United States. So, 
geopolitical concerns, WW3, Putin, Ukraine. And you know what? Those things are not going to be fixed by a half point move in interest rates. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Interest rates can't solve all the world's problems. But to that point, we're seeing weakness around the world. So could we be entering this almost global recession? I mean, you've seen it. I mean, you see what's happened. I mean, of course, the Bank of Japan continues to raise rates, but Europe, which was never looking great, and really all ebbs and flows from the United States and our economy. And if things are slowing down over here, then I think it's just going to be magnified in other places as well. China's still a mess. Those stocks have not even sniffed uh, a rebound. So the world is coming to an end. You have a global recession and, I don't know way to put it, uh, unstable geopolitical situation. Yeah, so true. Joel, I have a lot of respect for you for saying that right now because, look, a couple of years ago, you were on the record saying things don't look that bad. Things seem to be going okay. These markets were doing pretty well. Now you, along with a number of our generalist commentators that I pay a lot of attention to, are similar in your outlook, saying things are bad outside of Apple. Any bright spots, anything coming in the future that could at least try to turn this around? Oh, man, I, I like I'm looking. I mean, I'm looking at I mean, I guess I mean, people are going to want to kick me off the air here. But I mean, your utilities, they're holding up today. I mean, you look I'm looking at the XLU and that's all time. high. I know people don't want to hear about utilities, but you know what? You're going to need electricity. And as long as you can pay your bill, you're going to need electricity to, you know, to power, you know, all those high functions. I see Procter & Gamble. Um, that just got smacked. That's the opposite. That got smacked on earnings and they bought the rip on that. So I also can look at the consumer staples. But then you think about that and you're like, well, if people aren't having money and they're losing jobs, are they going to be going out and, and buying stuff? So really right now, I mean, the only chart to me, and I mean, you're buying strength here is the utility index. And that's really right. Like right now that in Apple are really the only bright spots I can see in the market. All right. Joel, hey, thanks for your time. I know it's not fun talking about just how bad these markets are doing, but it's three weeks now, and the s and is only off 6%, but boy, it feels worse. And to me, that means it could get a lot worse because of just all the data we are seeing and how much the rest of the world is struggling too. We'll see how the rest of this summer plays out, and even more importantly, the second half of this year. Joel, thank you for your time, everyone. Go check out Joel's website, Pre-Market Prep. I will post a link in the show notes. Joel, have a great weekend. Okay. All right. Thank you.